Now that we have the numerical solution to our mathematical model based on the Euler-Bernoulli beam theory, let's move to post-processing. And before I get into answers, I want to take a minute to situate ourselves within the framework of what's under the black box. So we provided answers with the mathematical model and then we provided a mesh on which ANSYS was able to generate numerical solution and it obtained, it now has selected variables at selected points. And everything, you know, so when we look at results in post-processing, everything is generated. All those results are generated from these selected variables at selected points. Going to ANSYS, um, I'll highlight solution in the tree and you know, the first thing we look at is a deformation, and we have an intuitive sense of how things should deform when loads are applied. So I like to look at deformation first before looking at things like stresses, which are more abstract. So highlight solution in the tree, select deformation total, and, um, and then just right click and say evaluate all results. You can Click solve, but I like to remind myself that this is post-processing, so this is just um, the evaluate all results is, you know, it's not going to, it's, it just means that it's a pure post-processing step. Okay, um, so we get this, and I, I'll zoom, I'll kind of manipulate the view a little bit over here um, using the middle mouse button. And um, let me turn on, go here, and I'll turn, I'll say show undeformed wireframe. So that's our, <coughs> there, you know, the midline before deformation, and that's a midline after deformation. And if I look at the, um, the you know, the amount of deformation, it's, um, and let's compare that to the hand calc. So it's probably, this is in meters. Let me change the units to millimeters. And it turns out to be around 5.1 millimeters, which, so this compares, um, so in the hand calc, we got 5.10 millimeters. So that's, that's close enough, and we can go and investigate further this comparison in the verification step. But that order, you know, the, the important thing is to check if that order of magnitude makes sense, and it does. And also, um, we know that when we apply a force over here, it should move down. So again, that, um, that seems to be, you know, check with our intuition and, um, over here, it's we have you know the displacement seems to be zero, which is encouraging. We need to check the slope. I'll get to that in a second. And so to you know, so let's check the slope. Um, for that, what I like to do, so you know, this is uh, exaggerated by a factor of forty-four. So to true scale, you can hardly see the deformation, and the auto scale that ANSYS gives you is 44. So that's the deformation exaggerated by uh, uh, 44 times. I'm going to super exaggerate it. And this is very useful to figure out, you know, the deformation and check boundary conditions and so on. So I'll do that. And this is a little bit concerning because here the, you know, the slope is not zero. So let me explain that. So we have you know, at this node we have UI1 and we have uh, UI2 and UI3. So this is equal to UI2 and that's equal to UI3. And UI1 is zero as we expect. But remember, we also have, uh, you know, the rotation of the cross section. So we have theta Z um, at that location should be equal to zero. And that's equal to duy by dx at node one. And that means that, you know, it should be like this, the deformation, whereas it's not. So, you know, from this visualization, it looks like this boundary condition is not satisfied. And this troubled me at first. And so I went and did, you know, a bunch of checks and convinced myself that, 
it's actually you know it's just a visual it's a purely visualization issue the solver does it right um, but when you know visualizing the graphics it's it's not done right so it's ignoring the slope and just using these values to to show you the deformed shape and you'll see that as you you know refine the mesh you'll get more of a of a smooth variation and you can also um, go here view and turn on thick shells and beams and all this is doing is, you know, it's wrapping the cross section around the um, around the the deform midline. And again, we see, you know, there's the slope discount. The slope discontinuity, uh, you know, creates this kink, which is non-physical, and and so that's you know that's a purely visualization thing. So I'll just turn off thick shells and beams, okay? And then uh, if you want to take uh, you know a, a snapshot of this you can do it in two ways you can go here um, let's see somewhere over here yes this one you can say image to file um, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um, the workaround if it doesn't work is to use the snipping tool in Windows so if you type in snip uh, it brings up the snipping tool and you can basically you know say which uh, where you want to snip and then save it I'm not going to do that in the interest of time no okay so that's the first step in post-processing um, let's move on to other things in post-processing and before that um, save your project